Good afternoon, Prairie View. Thanks for joining me here at 4 p.m. Uh, this is an important announcement. Uh, we've tried to make as many people aware of it as possible in advance. That way we could have lots of people tune in. Uh, if you are not tuned in right now on Facebook Live, uh, then we're going to take this video after it's finished and we're going to upload it to YouTube. Uh, that way you can access it later and that link will be included in Nancy Kinsey's email on Friday this afternoon. Uh, so either way, regardless of whether or not you're on Facebook, uh, hopefully you will get a hold of this video and you will hear the news that we're going to share here in just a few minutes. Uh, but before we get underway, I see a few people have checked in on Facebook and are watching live. Uh, before I actually really start with the announcement, uh, I need someone who has checked in uh, to comment and confirm that A, you can see me, and B, you can hear me. Uh, we've had some technical difficulties the past week or two with my phone. Uh, so can you see me? Can you hear me? Sarah, Nancy, Olivia, Evelyn, Becca, can one of you comment and confirm that yes, you can hear me? Come on, somebody comment. We do want to give people a few minutes to check in, just in case. Evelyn gave me a thumbs up. I think that means that she can hear me. Ah, Becca can see me and hear me, even though I mentioned her last. Sorry, Becca. And Olivia gives me a thumbs up. Hi, Olivia. Well, we will give people just a minute or two uh, to join in. Again, I want to make sure that as many people as possible can actually uh, be here with us as we make this announcement. Uh, so I hope you've had a great Friday so far. Uh, the days all run together at this point. Alexis Lawless can hear and see. Hi, Alexis Lawless. I'm happy that you're watching the video. And you're at work. Make sure you're working, Alexis. Make sure that you're not getting yourself in trouble. <laughs> Nancy can see and hear. That's great. It's beautiful outside. Uh, my plans when I get home this afternoon are to mow the grass. So hopefully you get outside as well, even though it is a little windy and a little cold. Who else is gonna join us? Amber Bunnell is watching. Hi, Amber. Any more? You know, I always swore before this whole coronavirus thing happened that I would never do this sort of thing for church, uh, that it felt so shameless and so embarrassing and so awkward. But tell you what, the coronavirus really has a way of humbling you. And the more you do these videos, the less shame you have. So, And we've got Kimberly Coors watching. We've also got Monica Street watching. Steve Livingston is watching. Good to see you, Steve. It's been a while, but glad you're tuning in. Ah, Nick Hunter is watching. I'm sure Nick Hunter has been busy at home with his new baby. And Wayne Bunnell is watching as well. Wayne and Amber both. Well, we will go ahead and kind of get started. Uh, again, hopefully people will join in uh, as time goes on. Uh, and just for those people who aren't joined in yet, really the first few minutes are just going to be kind of a recap. Uh, and then we'll get into the real meat uh, of the announcement. So just to kind of recap where we've been, uh, you know where we've been, but really when you think about it, it's pretty amazing. Uh, on Wednesday, March 11th, my small group actually met here at the church in this room. Uh, when we got here at 630, the rumors of the coronavirus were starting to fly. It was starting to make uh, more appearances on the news, and we were starting to hear rumblings that, hey, you know, this could be kind of a big deal. Uh, but as of 630 on Wednesday, March 11th, things were still kind of smooth sailing. Uh, and then by the time we got out of small group at 8 o'clock on Wednesday, March 11th, uh, the entire world had fallen to pieces. Uh, basically, in the span of just an hour and a half, two hours, three hours, we had the cancellation of the NBA season, or the postponement. Uh, we had Tom Hanks announce that he had COVID-19, and then we had President Trump give a speech in the Oval Office. 
And so just in a very short period of time, it became very clear that life is going to change pretty drastically. And that's what happened. It happened for us as individuals, as families. Uh, it definitely happened here at the church. Uh, the first official event that we canceled, I believe, was on Friday, March 13th. Uh, that was the men's breakfast at Chick-fil-A. And then slowly but surely, every other cancellation, cancellation jumped on board. So we canceled the bracket challenge because there was no NCAA tournament. Uh, we canceled small groups. We canceled men's ministry, women's ministry. We haven't had a spring work day. Uh, we haven't had a prayer night the way we typically do early in the year, especially for Easter. We didn't even have an Easter service. Uh, and then obviously we didn't have Sunday morning services. So uh, this has been quite the two months uh, in the life of our church. And it's honestly hard to believe it's been two months, but here we are. And obviously, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I think on behalf of myself, the staff, the elders, uh, it is just incredibly awesome uh, to see the support, the encouragement uh, that this church has continued to be uh, for so many people, uh, the way you've continued to faithfully give. Uh, honestly, the elders and I, I don't think any of us had any idea what to expect. Uh, what is this going to look like for our church? How long is this going to last? How are our people going to respond? Uh, this is all completely new for all of us, and it's just amazing uh, to see the way our church has responded. Uh, you know, in the pages of history, not a ton of churches and not a ton of Christians and not a ton of people can say that they've been through something like this together, uh, but we as a church have been through it. Uh, we have weathered quite a storm over the past two months. Now, of course, it's still not over yet. Uh, we are not out of the woods. There's still a long way to go, um, but... We're at least far enough along in this whole ordeal that we can start to think ahead and start to look ahead just a bit. So if you didn't know, uh, a week ago today, the governor of Indiana, Eric Holcomb, gave a press conference and he announced the loosening of restrictions in all different areas of life. Uh, and that included churches. And in his plan, uh, churches were allowed to start meeting with no numerical limitations starting today, Friday, May 8th. So that means, theoretically, uh, our church and every other church in the state of Indiana could have a service this Sunday, May 10th. But we did not think, the elders and I, uh, that that was in the best interest of our church or our community. Uh, we recognize that other churches have come to different conclusions, uh, that other churches are meeting this coming Sunday. Uh, by all means, if they can do that safely and responsibly, then more power to them. Uh, but we just didn't think that was prudent for our people at Prairie View. And we've said all along that we're going to do what's best for our church, uh, regardless of what's happening in the community or in the state uh, or with other churches. So we have decided not to meet this Sunday, May 10th, even though we technically could. Uh, and I pray that you just know that that decision is one that we do not take lightly. Uh, we take extremely seriously uh, our responsibility to care for your spiritual health, obviously, because we're a church. Uh, but we take very seriously our responsibility to care for your physical health. We don't want to do anything that would put you in unnecessary risk, that would put anyone here or even anyone in our community uh, at an irresponsible sort of danger or risk. Uh, so we did not come to these decisions lightly for this Sunday or for the plan that I'm about to present to you for Sundays ahead. So uh, that's enough blathering on uh, from me for now. Let's get to the meat of the announcement and that is the plan moving forward. So I'm gonna start with Sunday mornings uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about church events outside of Sunday morning. Uh, Sunday morning is going to take a lot more time. That's really, quite frankly, a little bit more important. Uh, but we'll talk about other church events as well. So I'll start out by saying that it is our goal, and I want to stress the word goal. It is our hope, it is our desire, it is our goal, not a guarantee, that we would like to meet on Sunday, May 31st uh, for in-person worship. Now, why are we waiting that long? Uh, well, we have a few different reasons. Uh, number one, May 31st gives us time to plan. Uh, there are things that are gonna have to come together 
uh, between now and our first worship service. And so if we wait until May 31st, that gives us lots of time to plan out what exactly this is going to look like, because it's not going to be the same. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a few minutes. On top of that, waiting until May 31st gives us time to communicate uh, with you, the congregation, uh, with the outside community. Uh, we want to make sure that we communicate and communicate and communicate uh, what we're doing and why we're doing it and when we're doing it. And May 31st gives us time to do that. On top of that, May 31st gives us a deadline as leaders. Uh, I think anybody who uh, is like me at least, I think most people, uh, there's a healthy place for deadlines. Uh, deadlines can motivate us and can give us incentive to work hard and focus and uh, make progress and accomplish things because we know that deadline is looming down the road. And so May 31st gives us a little bit of a deadline to really make sure we have our ducks in a row uh, to be together again on Sunday mornings. And then on top of that, quite frankly, uh, putting May 31st out there as our hope, as our goal, it gives you something to look forward to. Uh, it gives us all something to look forward to. Uh, these past eight weeks, I think we could all use something to get excited about. And after eight weeks away from physical gatherings at our church, uh, I hope that you miss it as much as I do. And I hope that you're as excited as I am uh, at the thought of being together again on Sunday, May 31st. And then finally, last but not least, and, and maybe even the most significant factor in the decision to wait until May 31st, is it just gives us time to see how things go. None of us knows how this reopening is going to go. Uh, the governor's plan is all very tentative. The dates that he put out are targets, but they're not guarantees. Uh, we don't know how this is going to go. Uh, it could go very smoothly, and all the people who have said that this is just one big overreaction will be proven right. Or it could go really poorly, and we could have to go back into more tightened restrictions that we just got loosened. Uh, honestly, we're not sure how this is going to go. But waiting until May 31st gives us time to simply sit back and watch, uh, examine things, assess things, and determine whether or not May 31st is still the right date. So if May 28th rolls around and this has been a total disaster, the numbers are skyrocketing and the coronavirus is once again out of control, then we'll have to reevaluate. Or maybe May 31st will roll around and everything will be relatively contained. Uh, even if numbers are a little bit on the rise, even if there has been an increase, it's still manageable. Uh, then at that point, we'll probably feel okay about meeting on May 31st. But waiting until then simply gives us time to get a feel for how things are going before we gather together again as a church. So that's the date. That's kind of the motivation behind choosing that date. Uh, now we move to the next part of Sunday mornings, and that is the truth that it's going to be different on May 31st if we get together. Uh, we still have a lot of details that need to be worked out. We don't have every single logistical factor worked out perfectly at this point, uh, but we do know a few things. Uh, these are the things that we have pretty firmly decided on at this point, things that you can expect come May 31st if we do in fact meet. So uh, one of the precautions we're going to take is right in line with the state's plan. Uh, if you are over the age of 65 or if you are considered a high risk individual in terms of your health, uh, we are going to highly encourage you to stay home. Uh, highly encourage you to stay home. Now along those same lines, uh, if you are staying home because you're 65 or up, because you're high risk, or even simply because you're just not quite comfortable coming to church yet, which is totally understandable, which is totally legitimate to feel that way, uh, we are going to live stream our services starting on May 31st, uh, at least for the foreseeable future, we're going to live stream. Uh, again, just because you're 65, just because you're high risk, just because you don't feel comfortable going out quite yet on May 31st, that doesn't mean that we're going to forget about you. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're not going to shepherd you. We're going to live stream the service, that way you can join in. We have not done that yet because uh, we just simply didn't feel right about it. We didn't feel that Sunday morning at Prairie View is something that you could replicate on a screen. Uh, other churches have done that and they've done it well and they've done it better than we probably could, uh, but we just didn't think that was best for our church. But once May 31st rolls around, if we have people here in the building 
physically together and worshiping God. Uh, at that point, a live stream is not an attempt at replicating a Sunday morning on a screen. Uh, it's a live look at a real Sunday morning on a screen. And so we'll feel better about that come May 31st. Uh, that, of course, is going to take time to set things up and make sure we have all the troubleshooting figured out, uh, but we're going to make that our goal for Sunday, May 31st. In addition, uh, we are going to require that those in the building on Sunday, May 31st, wear masks. Now, we understand that this has become kind of a hot-button issue. Uh, some people have all kinds of reasons for why they think we should wear masks or shouldn't wear masks. Uh, but for safety's sake, we are going to require masks. We're going to ask you to bring your own. If you don't have one of your own, we will provide a mask for you. Uh, so consider yourself warned right now that we will expect people in the building to wear masks unless they are under the age of two. Uh, so Calvin, guess what? You don't have to wear a mask, buddy. But everybody else does. And then we are pretty firmly decided that we're not going to offer child care. Uh, everyone who is in the building on Sunday morning, May 31st, is going to be in the sanctuary with us. Uh, children, while they are at very low risk uh, for major complications from the coronavirus, they are carriers. Uh, and on top of that, it's impossible to socially distance little kids, especially in one of our small classrooms in the hallway. Uh, so we are not going to have classrooms available on Sunday morning, May 31st. Uh, we're not going to have coffee available. Uh, again, bring your own coffee by all means. You can bring it into the sanctuary with you. But that was just a no-brainer. Uh, we need to eliminate as many unnecessary potential ways of spreading the virus as possible. Uh, and touching cups and lids and coffee creamer is a good way to spread germs. So we're going to cut that out for the foreseeable future. Along those lines, we're going to have some pretty extensive cleaning regimens in place. Uh, Nancy, historically, has done a great job with cleaning. Uh, this is not in any way an indictment on your cleaning, Nancy. Uh, but given our circumstances, we are going to need to beef up our cleaning. Uh, we're going to need more supplies. We're going to need a much deeper, much more detailed routine of cleaning touch points and frequently touch surfaces, that kind of stuff. So we will be working on that in the weeks ahead to really make sure that our building is as clean as it reasonably can be. Uh, we're also going to enforce social distancing. Uh, and what that mainly looks like is our placement of chairs in the sanctuary. Uh, we are going to configure our chairs the best way we can to give people distance, give households distance. Uh, six feet is obviously the common recommendation. That seems like a pretty good recommendation. Uh, so we're gonna move chairs around. We might take chairs out of the room uh, we're going to make sure that households are spread out. Uh, that way we can all be together, but also not be too close. Along those lines, uh, we don't know again the details yet, but we're going to figure out some sort of RSVP system uh, for Sunday mornings. That way we know how many chairs need to be set out. Do we have families of four coming? Do we have families of six coming? Do we have single people coming? Do we have couples coming? Uh, we want to make sure we have the right number of chairs in the room, uh, the right distance apart from each other. So we're going to RSVP or ask for RSVPs uh, for those who are here on Sunday mornings, at least at first. Uh, maybe things will change as it moves forward. Uh, maybe things will get better. Maybe we'll be able to loosen some of these things up as time passes. Uh, but for now, this is the plan for May 31st. So, uh, you might be hearing all this, and uh, let's be honest, it's not going to be perfect. Might it be awkward? Yeah, maybe. Is it going to be uncomfortable? Yeah, probably. But here's the thing. We're going to be worshiping together. It's that simple. We're going to be worshiping together. And that's something we haven't been able to do for eight weeks. You know, sitting on the couch and watching those videos has its perks. It's kind of nice to be able to sit home and relax, but ultimately we need to be together as a church. Uh, that is an incredibly important part of the life of our church, part of the life of a believer, is to be with fellow believers on Sunday morning worshiping Christ. So with all these precautions that we have in place, is it going to be awkward? Maybe. Is it going to be uncomfortable? Probably. But we'll be together. We'll be worshiping God, and that is the main point of Sunday morning. We can still worship Christ while we wear masks. 
we can still worship Christ when we're spread out six feet apart from each other. We can still worship Christ when we get together and we don't hug and we don't handshake and we don't have coffee. Uh, we love to do those things. We like doing those things. But not doing those things does not prevent us from worshiping. So that's the goal and that is the plan. I did fail to mention one more thing about our plan for Sunday morning, one thing that will be different, and that is communion and offering. Uh, we're going to change the way we take communion, change the way we collect offering, uh, to try and eliminate uh, as many risks as possible. Uh, there are risks with passing a plate. There are risks with passing a bag for offering. There are risks with me reaching for my communion cup and my finger kind of grazing the edge of the other cup next to my cup. Uh, we're going to eliminate as much of that as possible. Uh, so that is one change to look forward to as well on Sunday mornings. But again, we'll be together worshiping God, and that's the main point. So that kind of covers Sunday mornings for now. Uh, but I kind of want to spend just a minute or two on other events because those are important in the life of our church as well. And when I th say other events, I'm mainly thinking about small groups, men's ministry, and women's ministry. Those are the big three uh, right now outside of Sunday mornings. The decision that we've come to as elders and staff uh, is that those groups, those ministries, can meet effective immediately within the guidelines put down by the state of Indiana. So that takes us back to some of the things that we've already mentioned. Uh, if you are over 65 or an at-risk individual, uh, we ask you to stay home. Uh, we encourage you to stay home. Uh, take your health seriously. Take your safety seriously. We highly encourage masks. Uh, that is a good precaution to take. It's no skin off your nose uh, to wear a mask. Unless your mask is made out of sandpaper, then maybe it will take some skin off your nose, but I would not recommend that. Uh, we would also encourage you to have events outdoors. Uh, one of the things that has started to come out as the coronavirus begins to be a little bit better understood is that if you're out in open air, uh, the chances of you getting a respiratory type illness uh, are significantly lower when the air is moving. So if you have a night uh, where your small group could meet and sit on somebody's driveway, uh, you could sit out in the church parking lot on the bumpers of your cars in a circle six feet apart from each other. You could break out lawn chairs. Uh, meeting outdoors would be a great precaution to take and hopefully we have good weather that will cooperate with that. Like we said, social distancing is still in effect. We encourage you to do that six feet apart. Uh, and then one thing we will say too uh, is that we don't want men's, women's, small group type events in the church for now, in the building for now. Uh, and the reason we say that is that we just want to eliminate as many unnecessary possibilities as we can uh, of people touching doorknobs and touching flushers on toilets and touching tabletops and touching all the things that we touch uh, without even thinking about it. Uh, we want to keep our building as clean as possible. That way we can use it safely on Sunday mornings and feel good about it on Sunday mornings. Uh, so if you are going to have an event at the church, go out to the volleyball court, sit under the shelter, put your cars in the parking lot, sit under the awning that's right to my left. Uh, feel free to use those things, but we're not going to ask or allow people to be in the building for now outside of Sunday morning. So I think that pretty much covers uh, the announcements that we were prepared to make today. Uh, more information will be coming in the coming days, in the coming weeks. We've got a lot to think about, a lot to figure out between now and May 31st. Uh, but if you have questions, do not hesitate to email me. Do not hesitate to reach out to the elders. We might not be able to answer every question right away, but we'll do the best we can to offer some clarity uh, for what the next few weeks could look like. Now, again, we're not meeting until Sunday, May 31st on Sunday mornings. That means that this Sunday, the 10th and the 17th and the 24th, uh, we will be providing the same resources we've been providing. Uh, we'll still provide Bible studies. We'll still provide devotions. We'll still provide video updates. We'll still provide a sermon each week, all those types of things. Uh, but we'll also be preparing for May 31st and looking forward to that day. And finally, uh, as we wrap this up, we recognize that not everybody's going to agree uh, with the decision that we've made. Some people will think that we're meeting too early. Some people will be thinking that we're meeting too late, that we should be meeting this Sunday. 
Uh, some people will think that we are taking way too many precautions, that we're too paranoid. Other people will think that we're not taking enough precautions and not being safe enough. Uh, but I just hope you know and I hope you believe that the elders and the staff and I, we have spent a lot of time talking and thinking and praying about this decision. Uh, and this is the plan that we thought made the most sense for our church right now. So even if you don't agree with every part of it, uh, even if you're a little bit bummed by some of it, uh, even if you're alarmed by some of it, uh, I pray that you know how seriously we take this responsibility. Uh, trust me, we do not think for a second, stop thinking for a second about the fact that we will answer to God for the souls of those that God has entrusted to us in this church. Uh, and so we do not take your physical health lightly. We do not take your spiritual health lightly either. And that's part of how we came to this plan. So I would also encourage you to stay united as a church. Uh, again, we're not all on the same page about this. Some of us think the coronavirus is not a big deal. Some of us think it's the end of the world. Uh, but please be generous with each other. Please be humble. Please be charitable. Please be understanding. Uh, please use tact and, and, and wisdom and uh, compassion in your words and your actions and your thoughts. Uh, all those things. We want to be brothers and sisters in Christ still, even if we're not always seeing eye to eye in this specific situation that we're in. And then finally, I'll give a shout out of sorts and a, a big thank you to two of our elders and specific, uh, specifically. Craig uh, has been a huge help, especially at our meeting a few nights ago uh, with Craig's line of work at Meyer. Uh, where he has thousands of people coming in and out every single day. He has become very well-versed uh, in cleaning routines and safety routines, all those types of things, and that's proving very helpful for our church. And then, of course, Carl. Uh, I cannot think of a better time to have an elder who is an emergency room doctor than right now. Uh, Carl has tons of experience. Uh, we trust him. We respect his knowledge and his expertise and he has proven to be incredibly helpful as we navigate this. Uh, he's dealing with this on the ground, on the front lines, and so we really respect uh, his guidance and his opinions, and his guidance has played a big role uh, in coming up with this plan. So I think that covers it for now. Uh, again, I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope you consider this good news. I consider this good news. Uh, we all have something to look forward to. We all have something to be praying about, uh, and I encourage you to pray for each other as well. So with that, uh, you've heard enough from me for one day. Uh, you've seen my face for long enough. Uh, I encourage you to pray for each other, pray for our church, and uh, we look forward to hopefully being together again much sooner rather than later. So with that, have a great Friday, and we hope to hear from you soon.